All right, welcome to the Future Pioneer Night for Patriot High School. I'm Carla Drew and I'm the, one of the assistant principals here. Um, the purpose of this evening is to provide information for all rising ninth graders and new students to Patriot High School. Um, we're hoping to provide you with an overview of our school, its expectations, and to ensure that each child's successful transition to high school or new school happens. Um, all information from tonight's presentation will be available on our webpage, and um, we will have the recording of this evening's presentation there. So the agenda for tonight is that we will introduce you to our school, its students and success, um, talk about the high school transition, talk about students in the building, getting involved, and we will provide you with a virtual tour. So first I want to introduce our panelists. Um, we have the administrative team here with us tonight, and you'll be hearing a lot more from Dr. Bishop later. Dr. Bishop is our principal. Then we have Stephanie Bretsky, one of the assistant principals. Dolores Lucas, I don't think she's on quite yet. She's one of our assistant principals. Myself, assistant principal. Dave Van Gelder, assistant principal. And Chris Brown, he's our administrative intern. We also have Terry Snoots, who's the director of school counseling. And we have Katie Moore, who is our school programs, our specialty program coordinator. All right, so let's hear from Dr. Bishop about a little bit more about our school, since he is the person who started the whole thing. Oh, you're on mute, Dr. Bishop. Dr. Bishop, you're on mute. Good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Michael Bishop, principal at Patriot High School. Uh, I welcome you all this evening. I have been the principal at Patriot since 2010. And at one point I was the only employee. Uh, we now have about 214 people that work in the building. It is a great place to work. It is a great place for kids. And we're very excited that you could join us this evening. Um, just a little bit about our high school. Uh, you will hear us say quite often that we are the best high school in the nation or welcome to the best high school in the nation. And it's not just a phrase that we use, uh, kind of throwing it around or kind of slapping it around. We want everybody to understand it is. We are a five-time recipient of U.S. News and World Report's list of America's best high schools. We are the first gold medal school in Prince William County. We are a four-time member of the Washington Post Challenge Index, and we have been recognized as a Prince William County School of Excellence for four consecutive years. Uh, we want our staff to be student-centered and compassionate. We have an expectation that they can all learn, all students will learn, and that they will work not just for mastery, but not just for minimum competency, but for mastery. Uh, one of the things that you're going to hear me talk a lot about is you're going you're to hear me talk about, we want to make sure that kids can think and analyze information, think critically about current problems and situations, and then present that information that they've learned in a written, digital, and or oral format. And that's a lot of the things that we focus on in our classrooms, making sure that they have access to technology. And obviously with the last year with the pandemic, uh, we have a lot more experience with technology, our staff does, and your student does too. Uh, but with the expectations that are coming forward in the fall, uh, we anticipate some things returning to normal. Um, there's our mission and vision. And then the biggest thing for me is that the four words at the bottom, leadership, integrity, character, and pride, they are the four words that exemplify what we expect students to develop. Uh, as they come through Patriot High School, we want to make sure that they can be leaders in whatever capacity they choose, that they make decisions with integrity, they're honest and forthright and straightforward, they have character, and they just take pride in the fact that they go to Patriot. I think it's a great place for kids. I think it's a great place uh, to work, and I'm very excited that you're here tonight. Our school is based on the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Uh, throughout the regular school year, we will have an advisory class, which we did not have this year. Uh, because of the pandemic, but there is a chance where they go back and they meet with a teacher uh, once every two weeks or so, and we teach them the seven habits. There's actually lessons that go with it. We are a uh, certified seven habits school, and you'll see when you walk in the building, there are banners that hang inside the door. We're the only high school in Prince William County that has that certification. So those seven habits, in case you're not aware, be proactive, begin with the end in mind, put first things first, think win-win, Seek first to understand and then be understood, synergize, and then sharpen the saw. All of those things will provide examples to the kids of uh, positive ways that they can do that, how they can organize their notebook, their agenda, 
their class schedule, their assignments, making sure that we think about what's the end goal. The end goal is to graduate from Patriot High School and go out into the world and pick whatever that career is that they want. So using these seven habits, we try to formulate all the things around them. The syllabus is written with that in mind. The activities in the classroom are written with those things in mind. And the teachers really have done a nice job of putting this together. Uh, we have a couple of teachers who coordinate this, but it's a very exciting thing for our kids. Uh, like I said earlier, we're about, we have about 214 people who work at Patriot. There are going to be less uh, next year because Gainesville High School opens and we lose about 500 kids. Uh, but I'm a firm believer that the person who cleans the building and the person who, who serves food in the cafeteria is just as important to your child's educational success as the teacher in the classroom, the administrator in the front office, or the secretarial person who answers the phone. All of those people play a role in what happens at Patriot. All of those people are very important to me. And I want to make sure that everybody understands it doesn't just start with me. I'm not at the top of a big giant pyramid. I actually think of myself as being at the bottom and that I support all of those people and make sure that they're able to be successful. Uh, but I'm hopeful that when you come to school in the fall, you'll get a chance to meet some. We opened in September of 2011. Uh, we had about 1600 kids. We are expecting 2340 uh, this fall. We are taking out five of the trailers at the back of the school. Uh, we had at one point 20, we will now have 15. And then the expectation is the following year when the senior class decreases again, we will get rid of another five. Um, our first graduating class was in 2013. And this fall in 2021, we will actually celebrate our 10th anniversary as a high school. The school colors are navy blue, red and silver. Uh, they were selected based on the name of the school, obviously with the word Patriot and then a historical significance in our area. At one point, there were textile mills in the Noakesville area and they produced cloth uh, of that color, red, blue, and gray, uh, before and after the Civil War. We are a school of firsts. The architectural design is the first model that was used in Prince William County. There are interactive whiteboards in all classrooms. We have wireless technology throughout the inside and outside of the building. And we have turf fields, practice, and game field, and thus the nickname Pioneers. Uh, the mascot and the other things that came with it were designed with students in mind. As I said, we're going to have a 10th anniversary celebration in the fall. That kickoff celebration is September 10th, so please mark your calendars. There'll be more information forthcoming, but there'll be performances by our band. There's a Taste of the Town event. There'll be a raffle drawing, other pregame and mid-game events. Uh, all clubs and groups will have a chance to participate, and we're celebrating 10th anniversary with T. Clay Wood Elementary School. They opened the same year that we did. So Ms. Snoots is gonna pick up here and talk about the transition to a new school and some of the things that are important for you. And then you'll hear from Ms. Moore. I'm going to step away for a minute and allow them to take over. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Terry Snoots. I'm the Director of School Counseling. Um, and I just wanted to touch on a few things that might help you and your student with the transition to high school. Ms. Moore is gonna talk a little bit more about our Summer Bridge Program for AP Scholar students. And that just helps students prepare and get ready for um, their freshman year. Um, we also are going to offer another student orientation this summer, uh, usually in August, about a week before school starts. So we encourage you to you know, come to that. Usually we have uh, a program for the parents and then also for the students, uh, depending on what our restrictions are, um, you, know, you should be able to also take a tour of the school. Uh, advisory teachers. So each of your students will have an advisory teacher. We're hoping that we can get back to normal with advisory. That teacher follows them for four years and kind of becomes a little bit of a mentor for them. Uh, there's usually about 25 students in a classroom, if not less, and they follow them all the way through their senior year with the same group of students. And usually it's alphabetical. Um, during advisory, students touch on different topics. The seven habits are usually the first half of the year for the freshmen. And then usually um, by their senior year, they're learning fun things like, um, you know, how to change a tire on a car or um, assistance with looking at colleges. Or also, um, I know we did like a, how, to, how to make ramen, you know, 10 different ways in college. So there's lots of fun things that we do in advisory. Um, and we're look, we look forward to getting back to that because we really didn't have an opportunity to do that this year. Um, also getting your students on a consistent sleep schedule. I know myself, it's really difficult to, you know, get myself in bed and my kids too. So 
Um, you really want to get on a consistent sleep schedule and make sure you're going to bed each night at the same time. I know it's really easy to, you know, stay up late and um, be on the computer and all those kinds of things, but you really need, you know, your good sleep and teenagers need more than anyone. Uh, get in, involved in school and clubs and activities. We have so many clubs and activities for you to join, and we will be probably doing some kind of open house, um, whether it's virtually or, um, you know, at the uh, orientation to let you guys know more about some of the clubs that we have. Uh, of course, um, someone will be talking more about the, the different sports and activities that we do have, but really to make your place in Patriot High School, you want to try at least one thing. And if you don't have that one thing, you can't find it. And you and a couple of friends want to start something and you can find a teacher that will sponsor you. Mr. Qualls is a great person to go to to talk to about how do you start your own club or activity. Uh, after school tutoring, we have lots of National Honor Societies that assist with that. So you can uh, talk to your math teacher or your foreign language or your English, and they um, will offer you assistance on how to get in touch with those students to help with uh, assistance for um, tutoring. Um, we ask you as parents to get involved with our PTSA and our boosters clubs. You know, it's really important for you to feel a part of the school as well. Um, and so we ask for you to participate in those activities and also to create a parent view account and or a Canvas observer account. So you can look and follow along with what your student has to do. Canvas isn't going away. We're gonna keep Canvas. And it's a great opportunity for you as a parent to look at you know, what assignments are due for your student and kind of help them guide their um, time in Canvas. I know many of them are already used to working in the middle school, but um, it's really nice as a parent to get those emails so you know, oh yeah, you've got a test coming up or you can see the calendar that they see. Um, Parent View also allows you to look at attendance. Uh, you can get your students' transcripts, GPAs there. Uh, you can also see what their real-time grades are when uh, teachers put those in the grade book. Uh, so it's a really good uh, tool for you to use as well. Um, and then finally, just reach out to your counselor if you are having difficulty. Uh, I know a lot of us are anxious about coming back to school. I know my students are. Um, and you know, reach out to your counselor. They can definitely help you create that relationship with your counselor. And this is a picture of our counselors that we have right now. Um, I know some of them will be, you know, changing positions, but um, right now this is the alphabet. So if you have concerns already about your schedule or next year, you can see below there um, what alphabet you would fall into for your last name and you can uh, contact them. And if you go to our Patriot website, you can get the uh, email address for those counselors. Uh, we also do have a career and college counselor, Ms. Body, and so she helps our students when they are planning for their careers and college. So you have two counselors really uh, to assist you while you're at Patriot. All right, great. And this is a good time to let all of the participants know that we do have a Q&A section or um, area in this webinar. So you can ask any questions and our administrative team is ready to answer them. So please utilize that Q&A if you have any questions about upcoming events, which I'm going to talk about right now. Um, Ms. Moore will be explaining to you what the Summer Bridge for All Students will look like. We will have the ninth grade new student orientation. Um, the tentative date for that is August 18th. It will be in the evening and we are hoping to have it in person. We will also have back to school night. That date is um, determined at a later date. Uh, it's usually in September. And then we will have touch bases for parents on October 11th. So all of the above opportunities listed will provide you with an opportunity to engage in and discuss and learn about Patriot. And there will always be updates on Patriot's webpage. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Miss Moore to talk about her awesome summer bridge program. Thank you, Ms. Drew. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Katie Moore. I'm the Specialty Program Coordinator um, at Patriot. For the last four years, I've put on a summer bridge program that has been strictly for AP Scholar students or students in pre-AP classes. And this year, we wanted to change it. So we are actually opening up summer bridge to every single incoming ninth grader um, at Patriot. It's a, yeah, Summer Bridge is a three-day instructional program, again, open to all ninth grade, incoming ninth grade students, created to help your child transition into high school. Each day will focus on key elements of becoming a successful high school student with a focus on note-taking, 
study skills, stress management, and communication skills, as well as walk the school tours. That is their favorite part, is walking the school and learning where the classrooms are and where the mod units are, and where's the gym, and where's the commons. Uh, they love that part. Uh, we'll also use this as an opportunity to showcase our electives that we have at Patriot High School, allowing your child to have hands-on experiences with electives such as culinary arts, building trades, Project Lead the Way, cybersecurity, TV productions, and much more. This program will be held on August 10th, 11th, and 12th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. and it is free of charge. The registration link will be available on June 16th on all social media outlets and on the school website. So we are very excited to have your child and I hope that this, this um, program fits the needs that you might have for your child. All right, great. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Now, Dr. Bishop, do you want to talk about the upcoming school year and what it will look like? Absolutely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard, and, and I'm sure you have, Prince William County Public Schools will be providing five days of in-person instruction in the fall. You were sent an email the other night with a link to Parent View, uh, letting you know that the deadline to make your choice is 20 for 21-22 is this Friday. Now, if you are not planning to select virtual only, you do not have to do anything. The default is to come to school and be in the building with my smiling face and all the rest of us. If you're choosing virtual only, it will not look like it did this year. In other words, there will not be roomies and zoomies, people on Zoom who are sitting at home and people who are sitting in the room with a camera uh, or with a device. Uh, most of the virtual offerings will be provided through virtual Prince William or virtual Virginia and not Patriot uh, High School teachers. There's a possibility there could be, but as of right now, I don't know that we're going to have that. None of the specialty programs are available through virtual uh, options. The building trades, culinary arts, TV production, all the things that require a lab are not available virtually. Uh, and if you decide to take a music class, there is a real possibility that would not be taught by a person from Patriot. It would be more of an individual personalized solo experience, and it could be taught by a music instructor from across the county. If you have concerns about the virtual only environment or you have questions about what does it look like, you're more than welcome to reach out to your current counselor or to reach out to someone at Patriot and we'll make sure that you get the correct information. <clears throat> So with that, uh, as many of you know, uh, Governor, Northam, Governor Northam's capacity restrictions uh, expire this Friday, May 28th. Uh, we are hopeful and optimistic that the rest of the restrictions will expire in June, but I'm not gonna guarantee that. And I'm not gonna tell you I can predict the future because I cannot. If we are uh, in a restricted environment in the fall, dismissal is at 140 and first block would meet every day and then two, four, six would meet on an even day and three, five, seven would meet on an odd day. If there are no restrictions, if in other words, it's a regular school day, we would be a 7.30 to 2.10 and we'll make sure that you get that information because we would be odd day, even day. And I'll make sure that that gets to you as soon as we know. So with right. that, we're gonna talk Let's about what students- Back to Ms. Drew. Yep, we're gonna talk about what students can expect when they are in the building. So our expectations for students. Um, one of the things that we like to do is we like to keep students very focused on their instruction and what they're doing. Um, and the last year has made it difficult for them to keep themselves away from their screens. So some of the research that Dr. Bishop is very fond of using when we talk about these things is that um, ever since the smartphone or the iPhone has been invented, um, the cyberbullying has increased, um, we get inappropriate messaging chats, videos that occur during the school day or outside of the school day. Kids are distracted, they stay up late at night, it impacts their sleep, their sleep cycle, their cognitive functioning, and video gaming research says that kids make a decision every second and they're rewarded every eight seconds. So we have to keep them engaged and you have to support us in that. So with that, we would like for students to keep their cell phones out of the classroom and in their backpacks or in one of the cell phone holders on the wall during the time that they are in class. So when students have their headphones in, their attention span is turned off and they are not engaged in class. 
so we will not allow cell phone usage during class time unless it's related to instruction. We also know that students feel safe when they are comfortable with the adults and the environment is orderly and structured. So daily interactions, the class change and the structure of the building, that makes us all feel safe. We will always review with them crisis procedures, safety drills, fire drills. We make lots of efforts to um, report and deal with bullying. So if a student has a situation with bullying, they can report it to the head of security, they can report it to their administrator, or they can report it to their counselor, and we will take it from there. We can mediate a bullying situation. We like to cooperate with law enforcement, and we have an SRO in the building. Our current SRO is Officer Whited. And they are often just visible and the students know them and it gives them the opportunity to have good constructive conversations with the police officers who work with us. Each grade level will meet with their administrator and security to discuss safety at the beginning of the school year. And there will be no headphones in during the day, especially class change and during lunch. Here in Prince William County, we use a lot of standards-based assessments and at Patriot High School, we've been doing it since we opened. So the grades are a measure of what a student knows or can do, not behavior and not compliance. So you may see fewer grades in the grade book, or you may see one grade broken up into multiple um, content areas or skills being assessed. You will see possibly multiple attempts at assessments because students will have the opportunity to retake summatives. Um, you will see homework barely counting, if at all and you will see objectives, the actual skills and objectives for the course in the grade book identified by each of the assessments. You may not see the words test or quiz. We use the words formative for all assignments leading up to a final assessment of a skill, which is called a summative. So formative is the building blocks, summative is the final, well, not final, but um, is the end goal. With safety and security, we want to provide a secure learning environment, create positivity. That's why we focus so much on leadership. Um, but we focus on bullying prevention and identifying and reporting threats if there are ever any. Um, we have, as I mentioned before, we do have the SRO in the building. We also have multiple security um, personnel who get to know the students very well and they're highly visible. We have a crisis plan with lockdown procedures and we will send out an email whenever any of those um, lockdown drills or um, those types of drills occur. With electronic devices, um, we have security who will be there for lost and found. They hold on to things um, that are turned in. So if your student loses an electronic device, they will have the ability to go to security and see if it was turned in. All students will be issued a photo ID, and this allows them to scan in if they're um, late to class. Um, it allows them to check out books in the library, get lunch in the cafeteria, and attend sporting and activity events. So students should keep their student IDs on them at all times. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Brown, who will talk about our technology. Uh, good evening. So um, devices have been a big topic this year. Uh, devices are available. We'll be distributing those. You'll get more information about that for the uh, fall portion of the school year. Um, we have laptops available for each student. Uh, we do provide support for those. Um, the only thing we ask is, and I'm sure you've already heard this from your current school, make sure those devices are charged and that students um, have their charging cord with them when they have them in school. Uh, beyond laptops, we have iPads, Kindles, smart boards, digital cameras that are in use throughout the day constantly. Um, at the schools, we do have restricted Wi-Fi, so we are able to run our devices and prevent um, unknown devices from being on there and potentially causing issues. Um, students may use their own devices in the classroom, uh, but they do not have to. Um, if they use their own devices in the classroom, uh, the only drawback is we are not able to provide uh, technical support in many cases for those items. And here is, whoop, I just skipped the slide. Give me one second. Technical difficulties. Okay, so this is where you can find more information um, about all of this stuff. Um, how to understand Canvas access for students and parents is paramount. So if you have not gotten a really big learning 
opportunity with Canvas this year, we will be here to help you next year. The school website is a great place to go for information. Um, we update it very regularly. You can also find us on social media, on Twitter at The Patriot High School, and on Facebook at The Patriot High School. Many of our classroom teachers, teams, and clubs use Twitter as well. So now we can talk a little bit about getting involved as students and as parents. Ms. Lucas, can you talk to us about parent involvement? Loris, you're muted. You're on, you're on mute. Oh, it doesn't seem like it's working. All right, I will take over. So if parents want to get involved, they can get involved in the Parent Teacher Student Association. The president of that association is Susie Denham and you can contact her at the email listed. The meetings are announced on the PTSA webpage, which you can find if you go to parents and students on our website. The Principals Advisory Council also meets, I think it's every month, is it every month? Sometimes it's every other week, six times okay. a year. <clears throat> um, uh, okay, so they meet six times a year and that is in the building and you'll have the opportunity to um, hear directly from Dr. Bishop about some of the things going on here at Patriot. All right, Dr. Bishop, do you wanna talk about how students can get involved? Absolutely, so Mr. Qualls, our director of student activities was unable to be here tonight. His son is playing baseball. Uh, so I told him that I would take care of this. Uh, he has been the director of student activities since the building opened. Uh, and he does a fantastic job. There are 65 clubs at Patriot in which students can join. Clubs can be student interest, community service, or academic clubs. If your student is interested in starting a club that we currently don't offer, they can stop by Mr. Qualls' office, which is just across from the gymnasium in Commons 1, and he'll be happy to give you the information that you need. We offer 18 sports with 42 teams throughout the year, fall, winter, and spring. Student athletes need to complete in-person concussion training at a PWCS high school in between June 1 and the first day of tryouts. So if you're planning to play any sports this fall, can you go back, Carla? Any sports this fall, you need to come to in-person concussion training. We will have it at Patriot. We'll put it on our webpage. We'll put the information out there, but it is a requirement for high school athletes. You also need a Virginia High School League physical. That physical form is available on our Patriot High School webpage, as well as patriotpioneers.org. You have to take it to your doctor after May 1st, which you can do that at this point, and it has to be completed by a doctor. Please make a copy of it so that you have it in case something happens and turn in uh, the original to Mr. Qualls in the main office. You can drop it off at any time throughout the summer. If you are planning to play a fall sport, please make sure you go get your physical now. You cannot participate unless you have your physical done. Tryout dates, uh, August 2nd for fall, except for golf and football, which start July 29th. Uh, winter is November 8th and spring is February 21st. Uh, as I said before, you can go to patriotpioneers.org. You can find information about fall, winter, and spring sports. You can find out who the coaches are. You can sign up to receive information from them. Uh, our fall sports, as soon as the school year ends, will start to have their summer conditioning programs and provide that information of students who may want to join, especially our ninth graders. We want to get them involved because I know they didn't have any middle school sports this year, and I know that everything was canceled last year in March. So we want to make sure they have that opportunity. We have a booster club at Patriot High School. The booster club supports all of our athletic programs, so it is all encompassing. There is not a football boosters and then a basketball and then this. We want to work all together for that one mission. Uh, and that will be where the two words as one play in, which we've used at Patriot since we opened. Uh, any club or sport falls under the purview of the activities office. The Boosters Club has contributed $89,000 to school and uh, club programs. If you want to become a booster member, again, you go to patriotpioneers.org. It's a $40 sign up. You get a fee, free Patriot t-shirt or a koozie. And this year with the 10th anniversary coming, there's going to be lots and lots of things that we need folks to be a part of, and it will be fun. So I encourage you to join the Patriot Booster Club. It'll be a great experience for you. <clears throat> there are volunteer positions that are open and needed at this point. They need a secretary, a treasurer, a business sponsorship person. They need members for the fundraising committee. And we do mulch delivery as one of our big fundraisers in the spring. 
Um, if you can come to club meetings and collaborate with them, it's the second Wednesday of each month. If you have any questions, you may contact the Booster Club president at phsb.president at gmail.com. Again, if you'd like to join the Booster Club, the information there is on the screen. They meet twice, uh, second Wednesday of each month, and they have open positions right now if you'd like to become involved. All right, with that, we're gonna introduce you all to the building itself since we can't walk you through it tonight. Um, and this is, and Dr. Bishop, this is also you. You get to talk a lot tonight. Yeah, <laughs> all right, so um, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, my dissertation is actually on the impact of new uh, school facilities on learning and achieving high schools uh, in my career, one as a football coach, one as an assistant principal, and then Patriot as a principal. Uh, and the one thing I want to tell you is that this is the most optimum learning environment that I've ever been associated with. And we tried to match that optimum learning environment with outstanding instructional personnel. And we really have done a very nice job, I think, of finding the right people and putting them in the right positions and making sure that the, the, the kids are going to be the benefits of that. We have an abundance of natural light and open spaces throughout the building. There's a variety of learning spaces. We have small, large uh, computer labs. We have open-ended spaces. We have spaces which are specific for a purpose, uh, such as a culinary uh, arts classroom. We have a wet lab for building trays. We have concrete and masonry classes. And if, as you can see in the pictures here, this is the commons. This is the lunchroom. You can go back one, Carla, for me. Yep. I'm trying. <laughs> So as you look at the comments, it does not look like the lunchroom at Marsteller Middle School or the lunchroom at Gainesville Middle School. It is wide, it is open, it is large. There is high top seating like you'd find in a restaurant. There's spatial circular seating. There is outdoor seating. So kids have a choice when they come in. Right now, because of the pandemic, they're restricted. They have to sit in the same seat. They have to log in where they're sitting. But I'm hopeful that in the fall, this does not happen. We have four lunch shifts a day. We'll tell you about that on the first day of how you find out what lunch shift you're on it, but it's based on what class you're in at the time. Okay, Carla. Yep. So back there was one of our computer labs. Uh, as you can see, you can just go back one for me, yeah. Carla. Yep, <laughs> this is one of the conversations about different types of spaces. So the kids in the back are working on individual assignments in the computer lab, the kids on the left, that's a group space where they can collaborate on a project. And then the kids in the middle may be doing something else but all of the learning spaces at Patriot are designed for specific things. This is a biology classroom. And so the lab space is on the left, the individualized learning uh, locations are there on the right, the lab tables, and then the teacher is able to rotate and circulate throughout the room. And then this last one is a math classroom. You're going to see what's called a boomerang desk. That boomerang desk does not look like a classroom desk that you have at the middle school. It is able to be put in, I think it's 14 different uh, orientations. Uh, it can be paired up, put in a group, side by side, in a row, make a circle. You can do anything with it. And the top of the desk is actually able to be used with a dry erase marker. So the kids can write on the desk and do problems and activities, and then it can be wiped off. Uh, we do want you to take care of the stuff at Patriot. Uh, every classroom looks almost like it did the day we opened. Uh, and the teachers take a lot of pride in what they're able to put up on the walls and the things that they display in their classrooms. We want the kids to do that as well. The layout of the building, as you can see, is kind of divided into two parts. Um, the circular parts here in the middle where it says 1500s and that bottom end where it's green, that's the performing arts wing. The other end of the building, the blue and the red is English with the library in between them. And then the top, the 1300s, the blue shaded classrooms are CTE. The light yellow is the gymnasium, the locker rooms. Uh, and the auxiliary gym and weight room at the back. And then the culinary arts classroom is on the end. The picture at the top left, that's the 2100s and the 2000s. It sits right on top of the first building. The light green at the top is science classrooms. The light yellow at the bottom of the second floor is math. And then blue is business and purple is world languages. And we will have people throughout the building to help guide your student on the first day of school because this map right there tells you that it's a very large building. And with that, I have a virtual tour that some of our students created for our rising freshmen. So let's hope this works. Hi, new pioneers. Welcome to Patriot High School, the best high school in the country, maybe the world. I'm Mrs. Body, and I'm 
the college and career counselor at Patriot, but I also serve as a All right, is that is the sound not working on this? Let me know. Okay, let me see. Pastors, and today we're going to be showing around Patriot High School. So come on in. Yeah. And we're going to be going through the office first. And when you first come into the school, you're going to always have to go through the office. Here's the office. Yeah. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, I'm Chloe, and we're the other two ambassadors. So right here, this is our main uh, staircase that will lead you to upstairs where the other core classes are, which we'll show you later. And right here, these are the commons where we eat. Over there is where the courtyard where you can also eat outside. And if you keep going down further, that will be the second common where you will eat. And further down that hallway right there is also the music department, which we'll also show you, show you later. If you go down this way, it will lead you to security, the career center, and the guidance counselors. And then a little further back are two other wings um, for core classes and the library. All right, so now we're in the English wing, and our school is split up into four wings. So we have our English, math, history, and science wings. And all the wings are split up in the, uh, set up in the exact same way. So we have two hallways. At the end of each hallway, there'll be a teacher room or, a, or another classroom. And in the middle of each of the hallways is a connecting room, like small hallway, and then you'll find the bathroom there as well. And then right behind me, um, there's another door to go out or um, for kiss and run. If you keep coming down, you'll go to the library and this hallway right here. This is the main hallway which connects your four core classes. And you can also find your art classes here. So if you go that way, you'll find science and history. And then if you go that way, you'll find math and English. You can also eat lunch, flex in, or you know, spend after school time in the library. So this is our history department. And out this door, this door right here is another way that students can get their way to the trailers, which are up there where some students might actually have some other classes. And if you go up this staircase right here, this will be the science wing. And sometimes here in the morning, if you're lucky, the history teachers will be doing a little impromptu performance for the students. So when you come up the stairs, you'll see that right there, you have your science hallway, and you'll find all your science classes. And then if you go down here, It'll be all your languages, and Patriot High School offers Spanish, French, and American Sign. Okay, so behind me, on the other side, are the math hallways, and if you go down these stairs right here, you'll go to the English hallway, and another door leading outside to the Kiss and Ride lane. And here we're continuing our language hallway with certain classes that are specific to computer classes, and we also have our Annex office, which we have um, some of our administration. This is the Green House for the Civil Seminar takes place. And to my right and left, this is where you can find the two main staircase at the end of the hall. And these hallways are the continuous of science class. And right here is the secret staircase. In case you don't want to get caught in traffic, you can take this one. So this is the end staircase of the math hallway. You can find these at the end of the building. And these lead directly out of the bus. Is the end of the English department, and if you follow me, this is the connecting hallway down to the history department. And there's still a few history classes along this wall. Um, a lot of our electives are in the history department related to the humanities, like AP Human Geo, um, Intro to Law, AP Psych, and AP Sociology. So if we go up the main stairs, this is our main hallway that connects both sides of our building. So over there we have our IT services and also our computer lab. And then if you go down this hallway, you get to our business, econ, and fashion marketing hallway. Back here, this is the nurse office. And right here is the elevator where you can go out and only use it for medical purposes. And right here is the, and that is On either side of these glasses are health and PE classrooms, and on that side is another classroom with the girls' locker room. And on the opposite side of me is the boys' locker room with another health class down at the end of the hallway and past those doors. And now as you follow me through these doors, we'll be going into the gym.
Okay, so freshman year you take health and PE as well as sophomore year and sophomore year you do driver's ed, but you have to do behind the wheel on an outside source or through the school. And only do that in the gym, so you will take some extracurricular activities, whether it be dodgeball, volleyball, base basketball, and this will also be the assembly where everyone will attend. Alright, so once you pass the gym, you come into this little section, and if you go down there, there's the girls' locker room, and then we have our weight room, because we offer weightlifting as a class, and then right here we have the ox gym, and then if you keep going down this hallway, it'll be the boys' locker room, and to the left are all the PE teacher offices. This is our auditorium where the music department will have their concerts, and sometimes we have our assemblies here. Okay, so this is the second commons of school. Um, you can eat at any of the tables here, booths or the high tables. Uh, the high tables are my favorite, personally. And then if you go out through those doors, there's a courtyard where people can eat outside, and there's a parking lot a little bit further, and the stadium's out there, too. Yeah, this is the, right here, this is the drama room, where most people will take. And when you go through this hall, there will be both sports room, and straight down there will also be the band room. And right here is my personal favorite class, orchestra. And now right there will be the backstage to the auditorium. So this is culinary, and Patriot is actually known for the culinary arts. And as a uh, freshman or a sophomore, you can use uh, going to intro to culinary. And if you enjoy it, you can continue as a junior and senior and take the two-year culinary program. And they make really good food. <laughs> so we have lockers located all around the school, and every single student gets one locker. And even though you might not use them for your school stuff, you might actually use them for sports equipment or anything that you have to store. Down this hallway is the CTE hallway where we have computer classes, tech classes, hands-on classes, workshop classes, and we also have a PLTW, Project Lead the Way program. And down there will also be the main platform for you to go to the trailer. Okay, so when you come out of the CTE hallway, you'll be right up to the trailers, which are the classes with the 17 and 1800s. And on the left, Individual trailers are all foreign language and history and English, and then on the right is science and math. So on this side of the school, we have an extra field, we have our shot foot pit, and we also have our tennis, tennis courts and outdoor basketball courts. So we're on the right side of the school right now. This is the common two courtyard where some kids can have lunch. Um, and behind you is all of our parking lots. So the red flags indicate it's senior parking. The blue flags indicate it's uh, junior parking. And then white flags indicate it's either uh, faculty or visitor parking. And right behind you is also the stadium. And these two doors here are usually what doors students enter if they drive the stadium. Okay, so behind me is the front of the stadium. There's the football field and the track. And that's where people do sports after school. Football games are go Pioneers. Alright, and that was our wonderful ambassadors program, um, giving you your virtual tour of the school. I'm sorry that the sound went out a couple of times. Um, it was probably user error. So with all of that, we hope you guys enjoyed this evening. And um, we want you to know that we're so excited for you to join us next year. We're excited for you to become pioneers. And it's a great place for students to learn. You can always support us from home by communicating with teachers as much as possible, checking parent view often, following up, and remember that high school is all about establishing safe and orderly routines for students that will allow them to succeed. So with that being said, Dr. Bishop, do you have anything closing to say? If anybody has a specific question they'd like to ask, we'll stick around for just a few minutes in the Q&A section and try to answer those. Uh, somebody did ask me a question in the chat, which I wanna make sure I answer. If you did middle school concussion training, you have to come do the high school version because the middle school one is specific to middle school students. The high school one is specific to high school students. The other thing that I want to mention is I'm very cognizant of the fact that there could be 
a ninth grader coming into this building who has not been in a classroom since seventh grade. Because when the pandemic started in March of 2020, uh, they were in seventh grade. If they did the entire year, eighth grade virtually, they have not been in a classroom for almost 15 months. And the possibility exists that there could be a gap between what they know and what they need to know. All of our teachers in the fall, in the first nine weeks, will spiral back to the basic concepts and ideas that would have been taught in middle school. And most of our kids understand those things in order to be successful in Algebra One or Geometry or World History or English or any of those classes. And I want you to understand that's a basic expectation. Our teachers have actually already started to work on that process and will be spending time, conversations will be had with um, middle school teachers and um, students and making sure that we understand what they're going to need. Uh, we also will have a couple of programs available for tutoring and other support. I want our ninth graders to be comfortable. I want our ninth graders to be successful. If they're successful, I'm successful. The school is successful and the kids have a great experience. So if you have specific questions, you want to enter them in the Q&A, one of us will be happy to stick around here and answer them. Uh, other than that, Ms. Drew, thank you for a great job. Carla put this whole thing together and assigned everybody their roles. And she really did an outstanding job with this. We will have that in-person one, we hope, on August 18th, and we'll make sure that that is publicized and put out there. So thank you for attending. If you have specific questions in the Q&A, we'll stick around for a few minutes. But everybody, I hope you have a great rest of the spring. Uh, Terry, is there anything you want to add? All right. Thank you, folks. Really appreciate you being here tonight. Have a great night. We're going to stick around for a few minutes and answer your questions.